Hello. Welcome to the Trudy Haynes Show. I'm Trudy Haynes. And you know, I've been so preoccupied the last few weeks about voter ID and its laws that I kind of overlooked some of the things that happened near the end of the summer. So we're going to bring you up to date, catch up with that around the town. And we're also, Kathy Lee is back with her hidden footprints. She's going to be talking about a man who's no longer with us, but she remembers David Richardson. And we're also going to find out if, like me, you've been intimidated going to the gym to use some of those exercise machines, well, a young lady is going to dis take away those fears, and you're going to find out how to use some of those machines like I use them and get used to them. But right now, we want to go around town. <laughs> It was a return to the Dell after many years for this classic dance troupe, Philodanko, today internationally known for its classic excellence. And they gave something for the audience to remember in its welcome back to the Dell in celebration. And this night marked the first ever Founders Day celebration to be repeated yearly. It was the first time we returned to the Dell since 1989, I guess it was like 23 years, to bring dance back to the Dell. We celebrated Philadelphia, and we hope that it was part of a good fundraiser for us because Philadelphia, like all dance and all arts organizations, is in trouble. So we really thought we had an opportunity to do some fundraising and have a good show. And you tell everybody out there where they can spend their money? Well, if you want to support Philadelphia, be sure to send it to Philadelphia at 9 North Preston Street or Philadelphia.org. One of the featured guests was the legendary Maurice Hines of the former Gregory Maurice Hines team, who stunned the audience with his agility still intact. group entertained the entire evening. They will be traveling abroad and in New York, but will return to Philadelphia for their annual concert at the Kimmel Center December to 7th to December 9th. Get your tickets early because those tickets do go fast. At the legendary Freedom Theater, a unique fashion show was introduced. Gospel music accompanied the models and their attractive fashions by young and up-and-coming new stylists. Among the well-dressed audience was fashion mogul Stephanie Kane, famous as a fashion show event planner throughout the city. She received well-deserved honors for her contribution to the fashion field. Do you remember the guy that Philadelphia often thought of as an icon because he was sort of a, a, a guy who fought for the rights of the people, Dave Richardson? Well, Kathy Lee remembers him in Hidden Footprints. Welcome to Hidden Footprints. Today's segment focuses on two of Philadelphia's outstanding political social activists, Octavius Cato from the 19th century and the late state representative Dave Richardson. So sit back and learn. Octavius Cato was born on February 22, 1839 in Charleston, South Carolina, during a time that many historians call the road to the Civil War. Even though millions of Africans were living under the brutal lash of slavery, there was a large free black community that existed right here in Philadelphia. And Octavius Cato was one such individual. Even though free, the rights of blacks were continually being challenged, and after the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, a law that eliminated any protections of birth was passed. Whether free or not, this new federal law made it possible for free blacks to be kidnapped and sold into slavery. Free black men also lost the right to vote, and famous abolitionists like Douglas, 
Sojourn the Truth, William Lloyd Garrison, and anti-slavery and women's rights societies were springing up challenging the institution of slavery and women's rights. The Compromise of 1850 was passed and white settlers were rushing west to establish new states battling over whether or not they should be slave or free and Dred Scott's Supreme Court case ruled that blacks were property. These were the turbulent times and battles that Octavius Cato and his family had to live and fight through. They left South Carolina and settled in South Philadelphia, joining one of the largest politically active free black communities in the nation and the epicenter of the abolitionist movement. Being an educated free black man during these times explains how Cato became one of this city's black icons in the struggle for political, economic, and social equality during the 19th century. One can only guess what it was like for him to walk around people like William Still and Frederick Douglass. How did his parents protect him from discrimination and racism? Their answer was, and still is, education. His parents gave him an excellent education in Philadelphia's grammar schools. But Philadelphia was a very different place then. Lack of good paying jobs, voting rights, poverty, and poorly underfunded schools and mob violence against blacks is what led Cato to take up the fight and battle the enforced, well-established color line in Philadelphia. 100 years later, Dave Richardson would fight these same battles. Even today, our state is trying to block the vote and we still have high unemployment poorly performing schools, riots, and violence. Risking his life, Octavius Cato established himself as one of Philadelphia's most powerful social and political activists of the late 19th century. His oratory skills moved people to action, and he established the Banneker Literary Institute and the Equal Rights League. In addition, he was the first black member of the Franklin Institute, a member of the Philadelphia Library Company, the Fourth Ward Black Political Club, and the Union League Association. He was tenacious, brilliant, and knew how to build bridges both inside and out of the black and white communities in which he lived. Some say it was his love of sports that opened these doors. As a founding member of the Pythians, a black baseball league organized after the Civil War in 1867, he used baseball to lay the groundwork for his post-war civil rights battles. Cato challenged the established color line, and in 1863, he even organized a voluntary company of black soldiers to fight during the Civil War at Camp William Penn. In 1866, he led a successful fight to end segregation on Philly streetcars. He later joined the Republican Party and successfully fought for black men to gain the right to vote again in Philadelphia and to improve civil rights for blacks in general. In 1870, he succeeded when Congress passed the 15th Amendment, granting black men the right to vote. However, voting intimidation did not end with the bill's passing. Resentments against black voters arose days before the election, and attacks against black voters on election day were violent and open. On his way to protect black voters, Cato was attacked and assassinated by Frank Kelly at the corner of 9th and South. He was 32 years old. His body now lies in Eden Cemetery. Some of us are not afraid that even though we may be elected, we'll say what's on our mind. But we must understand that we're freedom fighters first and that all the other things come next. That I'm a black man first and then a state representative. I don't confuse the two. And I think it's time for us to wake up and realize and understand that you got a lot of us that are willing to go to battle because the freedom ain't gonna never be free unless we take it. There's too many of us sitting around thinking that it's gonna come to us on some damn silver platter. Our second individual is the late, great Dave Richardson. Dave Richardson's rise to fame occurred 100 years after Cato. Like Cato, Dave emerges as a major leader within the black community. Growing up in Philadelphia's Germantown section during what was commonly called the second reconstruction period of the civil rights movement, which took place in the 
1950s and early 60s was a very scary time in America. In fact, you can draw a lot of similarities between Cato's and Dave's Philadelphia. Dave grew up watching churches being bombed, bus boycotts, urban riots, and Vietnam War protests. Racial segregation was still the norm of the land in too many parts of America. Like most of us, he watched the civil rights movement live in black and white on a new medium called television. Scenes of police dogs and fire hoses being turned on black and white civil rights participants, including children, brought this epic life and death struggle into our living rooms every night. Yes, my name is uh, Wallace D. Callis. Uh, my father uh, owns Callis and Callis Barbershop. We've been here since 1978. Uh, my father's been in business in this neighborhood since 1959. One of his first shops was right next door to Roosevelt. Uh, I believe it's a junior high school right now. And while we were in this neighborhood here, uh, Dave Richardson was one of the representatives in this neighborhood. Um, so we've been here quite a, you know, quite a long time. Uh, I hope that we've done a good service for the neighborhood. A lot of things have changed in the neighborhood, but we're still here. Dave had what you call hubris. He had a stature that was unheard of for a man his age. He had his own way of thinking and his own way of doing what he knew was the right thing to do for the people. His rise to prominence came on November 17, 1967, when he was only 18 years old. His campaign encouraged African-American students to call on the school district of Philadelphia to number one, hire more black teachers and principals, two, the right to wear African clothes, and of course, three, exemption from saluting the flag. In addition, he fought an unrelenting battle to include African American history into Philadelphia's public schools. Well, the bell rang and Dave stepped into the ring. He organized and led over 3,500 students in a citywide protest. Hundreds of peaceful students walked out of class shouting, black power, black power, black studies, black studies. They were joined en route by Catholic school students and other students who just left class, and they marched all the way to the board of at 21st and the Parkway. A group of students later met with then superintendent Mark Shedd. Shedd was willing to negotiate, but he was seen as too liberal, fair-minded, and liked black people too much. In fact, he was the first superintendent to appoint blacks like Richard Gilmore and Bernie Watson to his cabinet. He even attended an integrated church in Germantown. So when he asked the police to refrain from sending in uniformed officers, then police commissioner Frank Rizzo ignored his request and turned this peaceful protest into a huge violent riot, complete with three to 400 uniformed police in riot gear. Arriving in buses, Witnesses quoted Rizzo telling his officers to get their black asses. Dave Richardson was injured protecting a girl from being struck by a police officer's baton, and 57 students were arrested and scores were injured. Always recognizable in his African garb and glasses, he rose from the streets of Germantown to become a powerful mover and shaker for the black community. Dave Richardson's battles with Rizzo was legendary like the time he organized the blockade of Washington Avenue and Ardley Streets in Germantown, the northwest section. You see, the administration of the A to B Lewis School was dealing with a serious overcrowding issue, and they wrote the city and requested between four to six new uh, rooms be available or made available to them at Stenton. Well, they, the city never responded. So the administration contacted Brother Dave Richardson, who, within just a hair's breadth or a shake of a lamb's tail had this entire busy intersection blocked off between the hours of 7.30 and 11. After three days, the city relented and the school was granted the extra seats that they needed. Although David Richardson did not live to see African American history become a reality, he paved the way for others to fight on, eventually making the Philadelphia School District the first school district in the nation to make learning African-American history mandatory for graduation. 
His other claim to fame is becoming the youngest state representative in the city after winning a seat in the House to represent the 201st Legislative District in a landslide victory. Being true to himself, he was sworn in dressed in his dashiki. Dave Richardson served for 22 years in various positions, like the Democratic Chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Chair of the PA Legislative Black Caucus, and the National Black Caucus of the State Legislature, and he sponsored more than 400 bills and became known as Philly's, Philly's champion for social justice. Those who knew Dave will all tell you that this is why he was loved and respected all of his life. Well, it has taken three hours. I've stopped in donut shops. I've stopped in barber shops. And it wasn't until I found this young woman next to me, Linda Chapman, who found Dave Richardson's original office. Yes. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Linda Chapman. I'm from the Germantown community. I knew Dave very well, and we're trying to keep his legacy alive. This is no longer his office. John's office is down the street between Armet and Schoolhouse Lane. Some of the for better fathers and mothers are giving, uh, trying to give a legacy and keep Dave's legacy alive. Picnic on the 25th of this month, or either the 28th, if I'm mistaken at Lonnie Young Recreation Center, 1100 Block East Shelton Avenue. I certainly hope that you enjoyed today's segment of Hidden Footprints. And I hope that you've learned a lot about these two outstanding leaders. Let us not forget them. And now, back to Trudy. Well, folks, are you intimidated when you go to the gym and you don't know how to use all those machines that are around you, like I am most of the time? Well, have no fear, Emily is here. This machine is going to do a full body cardio exercise. You're going to move both your arms and your legs at the same time to get an exercise where you're breathing heavy, but you're getting muscle work at the same time. To adjust the machine, you're going to lift this orange lever, and you're going to slide the seat back and forth. You want to get it to when your leg is extended, you have a slight bend still in the knee. You can also adjust it while you're sitting down just to make sure it's at a good distance for you. So this is a little too far out for me. I want to, right about here, I have a slight bend when my knee's all the way adjusted. And to move this machine, I'm gonna go forward and back with both my legs and my arms. You can use your legs more for more of a leg workout or you can use your arms more for more of an arm workout, but either way you're gonna get both cardio and muscles worked. And then to get this going, you can either hit quick start, you can do manual, which is going to let you choose, you can do fit quick, which is also going to let you choose, you can do hills, which will put in hills for you so you get harder resistance and you have to push a little bit harder or pull harder with your arms. Three, two, now. Okay, this machine is going to get your back to adjust. You're going to lift this here, and this is going to raise this bar and lower this bar. You're going to have it right across your upper back, and then you're going to push back in a motion. And what is it for? This is going to be for your back. See how it's right across my upper back? I'm going to put my feet flat on the platform, put a weight that's comfortable, arms across my chest, and slowly go back just to a comfortable motion, uh, range of motion. That also for your front? Mm-hmm. Want to turn around? You can also turn around with this machine. You're going to lock your feet under the, the front pegs just so you don't slide off. And then you're going to do a crunching motion. Okay, 
pretty good. Okay. This machine is going to do a couple things. First, you're going to do leg extensions, which is going to get the front of your legs. And you want to adjust the chair by lifting this right here. You're going to pull it out, and then you're going to adjust it forward and back. You want to have it so that your knees are slightly to the edge. You're going to sit down. There's handles on the side so that you're comfortable. And then, oh, just a second. Oh, there we go. And you're just going to go out. Notice that the bottom part goes up and down to make it comfortable on your ankles. You want to have your feet pointed up the whole time and then down. The more you hold, the more difficult it's going to get. Now also with this machine, you can turn around and stand up and get the back of your leg. And you're going to curl your leg up. Make sure you hold on for support and get both legs. Again, with this machine, you can do upper body. You want to adjust it so that you can reach the handles. You're going to pinch your shoulder blades together, and you're going to draw your arms back. This is, again, going to get your upper back and a little bit of your arms. This machine is going to be for a lateral pull down. It's going to, again, get your back. You can do wide grip or narrow grip. Each part's just going to get your back a little bit differently. So you're going to pull down and slowly raise back up. Don't slam it on the way back up. So you out, and then I can do narrow. And again with this machine, you can do chest wise. So it's going to get more across here. You can put one arm here. One arm here, and you're going to breathe it together. You should feel this a little bit in your arms, but mainly in your chest. Also with this machine, you can do bicep curls, which is going to get the front part of your arm. So you bring this forward. You can do the seated or standing. You're going to come here. You have a little bend in your knee just so you don't use all your back when you're picking up the bar. Stand up, and then you're going to curl the weight up towards you. Slow on the way down, because the way down works muscles just as much as the way up does. So that's the standing version. And then if you have a seated version, you're going to do the same thing, but while sitting down. Okay, this is called Swiss Ball. They come in many different sizes, as you can see. There's so many different things you can do on them. They're great for balance, even just sitting here and pulling your abs into yourself and just holding it. It's going to help you with abdominal strength and balance. You can do different things, like raise one leg and practice balancing. If that's easy, you can kick that leg out and bring it back, and that's going to give you a little bit of toning right in your leg. Again, with your balance, though, you can also add some dumbbells to your work and do different things while balancing. You're going to do shoulder press to get your shoulders. You can do some bicep curls, get your biceps. You can raise your arms in the front to get your shoulders again or out to the side. All of which you're going to have to balance more because you're on an unstable surface. If you want to use this ball while you're on the ground, you can use different things. You can do hamstring curls, which is going to get the back of your legs. You're going to lay down, put your feet on the ball, and bring the ball into yourself. You can also do crunches or sit-ups on the ball to get your abdominals as well. So you roll out a little bit, and you're going to come up. Making sure not to strain your neck. So that's a crunch. This is a sit-up. So that's with the blue ball. The yellow one is going to be even harder because it's tinier, so you can do different things as well. You can do a one leg hamstring curl. So you can either leave this leg down or up and bring it in and out. Like that. 
Make sure to get both legs up. You can do bike throw downs where you put the ball between your legs and go down and up, and that's going to get your lower abs. Or you can just have fun with the ball and toss it back and forth with a partner. Or you can squat with the ball. It's going to throw your balance off a little bit more. Just different things to mess with your balance, make you use your abdominals just a little bit more. Now these balls are weighted. So they're mainly used when you add, want to add weight to your workouts. Again, you can do squats with them. You can have it here, or you can have it out here. Moving the ball in or out is going to just throw your balance off a little bit more and make your stomach and your legs work a little bit harder. You can also do core work with the ball. You can do sit-ups with it, or crunches, or you can twist. But you're going to put your legs straight out and go side to side with it. Leaning back slightly, keeping your back straight, and just using your abdominals to twist you. You can throw it back and forth to a partner as like a chest pass. Again, working your arms. When you're working out, you want to make sure you stay hydrated. So if you start to get thirsty, make sure to have water on you. You want to also be drinking water throughout the day. Um, make sure you wear the proper gym clothes so that you don't slide. You want to have gym shoes with like a rubber grip on the bottom. You don't want to go sliding off machines. You want to have good traction. You also want to make sure you're in athletic clothes because you don't want your belt or your shirt to get caught on the machine and then you get hurt. All these things can make sure you stay safe. Um, you also want to make sure you stay within your own range. Go at your own pace. Don't let somebody else push you and use a weight that's proper to you. You don't want to be trying to do 40 because somebody else can do 40 if you can only do 10. Well, we certainly want to thank Emily and we want to thank you, our audience, for being with us. And we hope that you'll come back every Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. right here on Bounce TV. It's been a joy having you. Just remember that everyone thinks about changing the world, but do you ever think about changing yourself? Have a good one and a blessed day. We're just for you.